moisture across the region and with high pressure out here in the Atlantic that's bringing you the easterly winds at the surface so the converging winds on the Sunshine State means well, not a lot of sunshine today that's for sure. You can see the extensive clouds with the heavy rain that we uh, had earlier in northern Illinois. But notice these clouds crossing over central Minnesota. Now these are the ones that are associated with the vigorous cold front that will push through the east. And big changes behind this system as we go through the next several days. We'll even scatter some showers and thunderstorms maybe around Denver tail end of this front. West of the Rockies, though, it's looking good. Another hot day is shaping up in Southern California around L.A. where We're forecasting about 102 degrees today. Had 104 yesterday. Okay, all eyes are focused on this surface front as it skirts off to the south and east over the next 24 hours. You can see it pushing through Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit. What a nicer day is shaping up tomorrow for this area where we have all the rain today. But thunderstorms will be building over the northeast preceding the front. But as it pushes through, by Monday, it will certainly start to dry out. And then there's a better chance of the scattered showers, the tail end of the front over the southeast. Afternoon highs, coolest behind the surface front today. But notice how some of that cool air will swing due east come tomorrow and Monday with highs only in the 60s and 70s over the northeast. Then we start to rebuild with 90s over the front range of the Rockies Tuesday. And then 80s build back into the picture by the end of the week over the northeast. We're clearing out by Monday. Monday, but still the threat for scattered showers and storms over the south as we start off the work week. That'll be the case Tuesday. And then caught up in the heat and the southerly winds, another disturbance will push across the northern plains Wednesday. And more scattered showers and storms are possible here. And then this will eventually skirt onto the east of the upper Mississippi Valley by Thursday afternoon. At the Discovery Channel, Watch the Florida Forecast on the Weather Channel for information concerning the hot spots, water temperature, and the conditions of your favorite Florida getaway, sponsored by the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. And we have a look at that Florida forecast coming up for you in a moment. Right now, though, the Bowdoin Beach Report, if you're planning on going to the beaches, we'll let you know what you can expect. Not the best of days if you're planning on uh, heading out to the lakes, that's for sure, because we have showers and some moderately heavy rains pushing through the northern parts of Illinois into Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. So uh, lakes uh, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario will give you some problems as we have had reports of frequent lightning with some of these storms and some really locally heavy rain. So limited sunshine in here. Water temperatures in the 60s and 70s, and then they warm into the 80s as you head south the southern Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. Look at the limited sunshine expected today over Florida as we have thunder showers, mainly offshore, but you can see these are pushing out to the west and they've been uh, building inland from around Avon Park and even Orlando. So more scattered showers and storms are possible. Had some locally heavy rains in the last 24 hours around Miami and unfortunately more scattered showers and storms are possible today. So kind of gusty with the winds, but of course more gusty in and around those thunderstorms. Now out west, Southern California, LA, you're going to get up to 100 degrees again today. So head to the beach, water temperature of about 70. Stay with us. We have a look at Florida for you next. Your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel. Supposed to be the Sunshine State. The last 24 hours we have not had much in the way of sunshine and the sunshine outlook is pretty dim as we have low sunshine for the Panhandle all the way down to Lake Okeechobee and the peninsula. Not the best of days, that's for sure. We've had locally heavy rains already and look at the thunder showers. They're surrounding the peninsula and even some coming on shore on the Gold Coast right now. You can do a hard job the hard way or the hefty way. Okay, half time. New hefty handle sack bags with helping handles, big wide handles to handle almost anything. <laughs> They're easy to close and keep closed without leaking. They're a lot easier than these for no more cost than these. Just 10 cents a bag. New hefty handle sack. You choose the hard way or the hefty way. Excuse me. Well, if you have travel plans today, I hope you
you don't have plans on traveling Interstate 80 because that will give you some big problems. We have rain showers, embedded thunderstorms, moderately heavy rains pushing through the uh, northern parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Again, Interstate 80 runs right through this region and it will be wet the entire way. So, oh, it's not the best of traveling days, that's for sure, across this region as it's all pushing off to the east. Now the outlook for strong, severe storms today is mainly out ahead of a surface cold front that we have that will push across the northern plains and eventually work into the warm and moist air that we have building over the northeast. There's a threat for some big storms even tomorrow, the big cities in the northeast, while tomorrow Minneapolis, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Detroit will start to dry out. The system will swing through now and winds behind it may exceed some 30 miles an hour kind of a vigorous cold front. As a matter of fact, over the next several days, we'll follow that system and show you how it will affect your area. So don't go away. We have a five-day outlook coming up next. If you are looking for job options and... As promised, let's check on the next five days, 21 minutes after the hour, by the way. Here is later this afternoon. We have the front now. This is the one we've been talking about as it drapes from the central Great Lakes back into the central plains. Out ahead of it, we just have a broad southerly wind flow at the surface. Scattered showers, thunderstorms, even today, Boston, New York, Philly, there's about a 20% chance today. But as this cold front approaches from the west, the chances will increase to about 60 and 70% tomorrow for the thunderstorms, the big cities in the northeast. We're still dealing with that trough of low pressure in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, so more scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible over the peninsula. Oh, we've had so much rain across the southern peninsula in the last 24 hours, and unfortunately, grounds are already saturated, so flooding may continuously be a problem across the central and southern peninsula of Florida. Tropical storm Elena out here in the Pacific, it'll continue to move off to the west and weaken, but it will aid in giving some additional moisture to the southwest. We certainly need it as much as we could get. Yesterday, even though we had some scattered showers in the mountainous areas in Southern California, LA still got up to 104 degrees. That was a record, by the way. It should be 102 degrees. That's what we're forecasting today. So still pretty hot in Southern California. Nice, though, of the Pacific Northwest, and it's even going to be nice tomorrow across the upper Midwest from Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Chicago, and even around Detroit. I'm talking a very comfortable air mass building behind this cold front. With afternoon highs in the 70s, low humidity levels, just absolutely gorgeous. And actually, by tomorrow afternoon, the front will slide through New York City and perhaps Boston, but still draping back over the south. So there's a good chance of storms even tomorrow. Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, and over to Jackson, Mississippi. Highs today behind the surface front, 60s and 70s. But notice how the cool air slides off to the northeast. Oh, 60s and 70s for New York, Boston, Monday. Of course, this is behind the surface front. But we start to build back the heat in the western high plains Tuesday. And eventually, those 80s will return to the northeast by the time the end of the week gets here. We push the front off the coast, but still draping back scattered showers and storms at tail end of it. And then more moisture builds across the nation's midsection Wednesday. The new Volkswagen Jetta GLX was built for the Audubon, where people go... Yes. Time now to check on radar, and I'll tell you, so far this morning, we've really been focusing our attention on across, across the Midwest because we've had some locally heavy rains. It is still raining quite heavily in northern Illinois, Indiana, northern Ohio here in the southern parts of Michigan. Notice how this batch of heavy, heavy rain pushes into the western parts of New York and Pennsylvania. A flood watch has been issued for northwest Pennsylvania, still a flood watch in northern Ohio this morning. We've had anywhere from two to three inches of rain in the last several hours near the Cleveland vicinity with Lorraine and Summit counties under a flood warning. Showers back here across Ohio, or should I say Chicago, ORD, O'Hare's Airport, and uh, Gary, Indiana. It looks like we've started to uh, lessen up or a bit or decrease in aerial coverage, just showers now, opposed to the heavier rains we had just a couple of hours ago. Kalamazoo, Jackson, Detroit, still reporting scattered rain and embedded heavier rains, but still a large area of moderately heavy rains in northwest Pennsylvania and northern Ohio. Flooding problems. How do you spend your week? 
Monday, it's back to work weekend. And when Friday comes along, it's every man for himself. Watch the weekend on. <laughs> weather forecast four hours a day you are watching the weather channel and thanks so much for joining us you're just in time a look at the current weather scene from coast to coast let's start off with radar because so far this morning radar has been very very active across the midwest we've had some locally heavy rains in northern ohio Four inches have fallen since this morning, and we've had reports of urban and stream flood warnings. That means some of the city streets are uh, flooded in the uh, Cleveland area, so you definitely want to be very careful here. Let's zoom in on a few areas now. Stretching back across northern in Illinois, we still have some showers, though it looks like the heaviest of rain has pushed on to the east of Chicago and O'Hare's airport. This is Gary, Indiana, and South Bend, and you can see from Kalamazoo to Jack Jackson and Detroit, we have scattered showers still lingering, but the heaviest of rain has pushed into the northeastern parts of Ohio. Now, northern Ohio, we have a flood watch in effect, and flood warnings remain in effect for Lorraine and Summit counties, which is right here. Cleveland here, Youngstown, Canton, Akron, locally heavy, heavy rains in the northwestern parts of Pennsylvania, too. So the Ohio Turnpike will give you big, big problems this morning. I want you to be careful if you have travel plans here. As again, some of the roads are covered with water. You don't want to attempt to cross because you don't know the depth of the water, and you just may not be able to cross successfully because we have had reports of some streets flooded in the downtown Cleveland area. In western New York, around Buffalo and Jamestown and Rochester, looks like the rain on the increase, and this continues to move off to the east, so might be pushing into Syracuse and Binghamton and even Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the next couple of hours. We've had the heaviest storms to move out of eastern Massachusetts, so Boston, you're in the clear now. However, there is a threat for some scattered showers later today. You can see most of the thunderstorms have moved right on out of the uh, inner and the outer loops, so the beltway is looking uh, pretty good right now. Most of the action has developed along this warm front as it drapes back across Detroit and Rochester and over to Boston. Out ahead of the surface front, we have a broad southerly wind flow, and that's bringing in all that tropical air. That means it's moist and warm, and with that in mind, thunderstorms are possible later today. The farther south you go, though, and the chance lessens for the thunderstorm activity, as there may be an isolated chance around Atlanta, but the operative word is isolated. Much of the same around Nashville and uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and Birmingham. I would cancel my outdoor plans if I was in the interior regions of the southeast, so uh, just uh, consider that or keep that in mind. Scattered showers and thunderstorms They've been surrounding the Florida Peninsula so far this morning, and some have basically pushed on shore from the Gold Coast here. You can see inland around Disney World, we have some thunder showers this morning over to Avon Park and Daytona Beach, and even near West Palm Beach, we still have some thunder showers, and we've had over an inch and a half of rain so far at West Palm Beach, but we've really had some locally heavy rains in Miami the last 36 hours. Upwards some six inches have fallen, and we've had reports of uh, flooding problems too and very treacherous traveling conditions in South Florida because of the heavy rains. And with the southerly winds at the surface, there is a threat for just the tropical air mass to encompass most of the peninsula and more thunderstorms are possible even today in areas that we've already seen uh, saturated conditions. So unfortunately, it looks like uh, matters are getting worse before uh, getting better across the peninsula of Florida still with that tropical air mass over the region. You can see the high level, uh, let's see, I guess these are nimble stratus clouds that are enveloping the northern parts of Illinois and Indiana with the rain showers and the heavier embedded rains over northern Ohio and northwest Pennsylvania. But then we pick up some high level cumulus puffy clouds clouds developing in central uh, Minnesota and uh, Nebraska and South Dakota and with these we have the widely scattered thunderstorms and this frontal boundary this is the one that will bring the threat of some uh, very big storms throughout the afternoon anywhere from Chicago to Milwaukee and Detroit so though we have the rain now it seems like the threat throughout the afternoon hours calls for more thunderstorms because 
will be redeveloping out ahead of this surface cold front as it pushes through southern Minnesota and drapes back into the front range of the Rockies. Denver, there's a threat for scattered showers for you too with the tail end of the front draping back. West of the Rockies and we run into fair skies but hot again today in Southern California. Put the pieces back together for you and there you have it. All eyes focused on this area and mainly this cold front as it pushes off to the east. Now behind it we do have a very pleasant air mass that we'll be building. So later today and tomorrow morning for sure we'll be looking nice on your Sunday for Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit and even around Minneapolis but still a threat of some pretty big storms along the northeastern seaboard with a cold front pushing through but once it moves through, it's going to be nice by a Monday afternoon for sure over the northeast. Afternoon highs coolest to the north of the front with 60s and 70s. And then we pick up uh, 80s today, but behind it over the northeast, we replace those 80s with 70s as a cooler air mass builds in. But then all the front range of the Rockies and the western high plains and the 90s build back up. And by the end of the week, actually, we start to warm back up over the northeast, too. The front has cleared the coast, so we're drying out and cooling down over the northeast Monday. But still the scattered showers and storms over the southeast. And then moisture builds over the plains with scattered showers and storms Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday, and this moves into the upper Mississippi Valley by Thursday afternoon. That's a look at the national perspective. We have your backyard weather coming up shortly. Okay, let's check now on international weather and see what's going on in Europe. A look at the current temperatures. Of course, it's uh, about early midday in Europe, or late midday, should I say, They're about six hours ahead of us, Eastern Daylight Time. Anyway, it's 79 degrees in Vienna, Austria, about 73 in Zurich, 84 in Barcelona, Spain. The forecast tomorrow shows showers from the Scandinavian country over to Poland, but other than that, high pressure will build over the British Isles. So if you go into London, you don't need the umbrellas, but you certainly need the light sweaters and jackets because afternoon highs are only forecast in the 60s. Very warm, though, over the Mediterranean waters where 90s will stretch from central Spain and Portugal and even across Corsica and southern Italy. Well, that's a look at international weather checked on Europe. Don't go away. We have a look at the tropics coming up shortly. Yeah. To a seven-year-old velocity... Well, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to take a look at our tropical weather segment and talk about some suspicious weather over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Manufacturing. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Stormwatch. I'm Sharon Result, and so much to talk about. We've got some rainy weather across the east that could cause you some slowdowns and some snowy conditions in parts of the west. Let's get started and show you first the big picture. Featuring the rain and our area of low pressure associated with that rain across the southeast. The rain stretching up the mid-Atlantic coast and on into parts of southern New England. And we'll find the snow as we go from the northern Rockies back into the Wasatch Mountains of Utah. And in fact, even extending into the Rockies of Colorado, some snowy travel at this time. A reminder that this storm watch is brought to you by Safe Step. Let's go ahead and take a look at the big picture. And this is the radar composite. And with that, you can again see the rain moving on in uh, to areas like central Tennessee, middle Tennessee. There's where the center of circulation is with some of that rain kind of backing around that center of circulation. So you're seeing more rainfall in and around Memphis at this time. Rainy travel really just about over all of Georgia, maybe lightening up a bit with some drier air trying to wedge into Atlanta. Moisture stretching up through D.C. and even on up into Philadelphia. We are in the thick of things right now. Mainly a light rain event, but because of the persistence of the rain for some of you, well, you could see the rain tally up to a tenth to maybe a half an inch before all is said and done. Again, the rain just about ready to move on into New York City. Some of you probably already feeling or hearing a few of those raindrops. Occasional light showers very widely scattered into parts of southern New England. Again, Boston, not all this reaching the ground, so you might be getting some light sprinkles. Worcester has reported a little bit of light rain, light rain showers. New York City, and we're watching the moisture moving along Long Island now. 
So it's going to really moisten up here on the LIE. It's going to get very wet for you uh, if it hasn't already along the northern extent of I-95. So some of you are really going to be feeling it, and it's going to slow things down this evening. So we encourage you to slow it down as well. Trenton and Philadelphia getting some of that rainfall. The pattern extends all the way back down through Baltimore and on into Washington, D.C. But look beyond Washington, and we'll find that the moisture pattern becomes a little bit more scattered. So the bulk of the steady precipitation is lifting to your north and east. Now you've got more of a showery regime to contend with. We head into the southeast, and again, the current weather map featuring a lot of rain here. The plume of moisture being drawn up from the Gulf of Mexico winds up ahead of our front and ahead of the area of low pressure through Georgia and then back around that area of low pressure back into eastern sections of Arkansas and western Tennessee. We've had a few thunderstorms developing, a lot of these tending to weaken as they head off to the north. There's a lot of low-level moisture. The atmosphere is fairly juicy, so still the potential for some thunderstorms, but again, it's not the best time of the year to see that development, especially once the sun has set and any daytime heating that you happen to see just isn't there. Making a new batch of rain heading up into your neck of the woods, uh, stretching up along Interstate 85, a wet go of it from Atlanta to Greenville, Chattanooga looking at some wet conditions, and as I mentioned, a brief break for you around Atlanta, but it's not necessarily all said and done. We continue to watch out for a few thunderstorms across the southeast. Here's a look at that circulation around the area of low pressure. And then as we extend uh, on into your forecast, we'll find that most areas looking at anywhere from a tenth to a half an inch as a result of all that rain. Snowy travel out to the west. The best news is after blustery conditions in Salt Lake City, things are finally winding down for you. We're going to be back. We'll have more details on your current weather and your forecast. This program was sponsored by Safe Step Ice Melter. used to be just one way to get through an icy winter. Wet weather is draped across the eastern third of the nation. The rain stretches from Florida all the way up into the northeast. Hello, I'm Warren Madden. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Weather Center. And I'm Sharon Rizalton. There is wintry weather in the meantime in parts of the west, and we're working on Tuesday's forecast. Uh, we'll start you out first in the northeast. And as Warren alluded to, the rain slowly moving up the coast, now moving into New York City. JFK Airport reporting some light rain at this time, and some light sprinkles around Boston. But That'll move on through, and it'll be a little while longer before the bulk of this rain begins to make its way on up into the Boston area. But wet conditions are expected for you in and around the Boston area as we go on into your nighttime and on into Tuesday as well. Here's a look at the big picture in the radar screen. And again, it's a snow event up across northern Maine. That's exiting the region. Scattered showers here as we go into northern sections of the northeast coast. And then we get further southward, it's more of a steady rain, and that's the stuff that's going to continue. This is just the beginning for some of you of perhaps a over 24-hour period of some wet conditions. So if getting out there and doing the holiday shopping in the rain is not your cup of tea, I don't blame you, but you're going to have to contend with it or maybe put off doing a little bit of that shopping until this ends later Tuesday night. New York City just starting to see the rain moving on in, so not all of the boroughs getting wet just yet, but the rain will steady up for you. And, um, well, some of you could see at times um, some pretty steady rain coming down. All the way back down toward Philly and even on into Baltimore, the rain continues. D.C., look Looking at some more rain, but more scattered showers behind this. So you might occasionally catch some breaks in there where you can make that mad dash out to the car between stores. Your precipitation forecast again, anywhere from a tenth to a half an inch of rainfall as we head across the mid-Atlantic. Notice how as we go into the mid-morning hour on Tuesday, it lightens up a bit across southern sections of New England. But beyond this time period, we are going to find more moisture across the region. Word of caution. Heading into southern sections of New York State, northern Pennsylvania, some cold air in place, and we might find a little mixture of precipitation across this region, maybe a little bit of freezing rain. So the possibility for some slick conditions as you head out for your Tuesday morning commute. Do keep that in mind. And again, this map labeled Tuesday morning, so that's a factor for you during the morning hours. A quick look at temperatures, just kind of proving the point that, hey, nothing uh, really too cold for this time of the year. We're still on the receiving end of some pretty decent warmth here across this part of the nation. And finally, a look at your current weather map. 
Much of the east uh, just pretty much enshrouded in rain. Warren's now going to cover this area of low pressure and the moisture associated with it because you will find some bouts of heavier rain and maybe some flickers of lightning here too. Right, Warren? Oh, yeah, that's right, Sharon, because we're closer to the uh, Gulf of Mexico source of moisture, more instability in the air, upper level low spinning here near Memphis, Tennessee. Put everything together. We have heard some rumbles of thunder, seen some flickers of lightning, but we've also seen some beneficial rain out of all this. Notice that the low at the surface near Huntsville, Alabama, the cold front trailing down through central Alabama, then exiting out not too far from Appala Appalachicola here in Florida, the Florida Panhandle. And then notice the very wavy, warm slash stationary front. The colder air not giving way in the southern Appalachians. And so Find some snow flying in parts of Wyoming and eastern Montana, and it's a rain event as we watch the onshore flow continue across the Pacific Northwest, tugging some of those showers on shore and keeping things a bit blustery for you with the wind and the rain in areas like Seattle and Portland. Let's uh, start you out first on a radar tour. We'll talk first about the rain from Bellingham down Interstate 5 through Seattle, uh, back down through Olympia and extending all the way into the Portland area. And again, you can get a feel for the moisture that's being pulled in from the uh, offshore regions keeping things on the wet side across this part of the nation. Getting a break in the action here around Salt Lake City. There's still some snow flying. But look at the scenes earlier today as folks were bundled up and the little kids were as well. Uh, very blustery scenes. It was breezy. The snow came down heavy at times. Even visibility is reduced to a quarter of a mile. And temperatures, by the way, here have dropped to around 30 degrees at one point during the day. So some chilly readings and some very wintry scenes here out of Salt Lake City. Still in through the highest elevation you might expect some more accumulation. And great news here for the skiers into northern Colorado. Some brand new snow cover for you. Winds are still a bit on the brisk side across much of the west uh, into the northwest. We still have some gale warnings in effect uh, taking you along portions of the Washington coast down toward Florence, Oregon. So we encourage you just to get a firm grip on the wheel, and especially if you're traveling in higher elevations, please watch out for the gusty conditions. That's a look at the entire nation. Let's see how this map is going to change now as we take you right on into your Tuesday. Thanks, Sharon. We look at Tuesday morning, and it still looks to be a bit unsettled here from the Ohio River Valley eastward to the Mid-Atlantic with wet weather for your commute in Cincinnati, over toward perhaps Pittsburgh, and certainly in toward Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia. And we will be watching for the possibility of some ice. Notice the orange here along the Pennsylvania and New York state border, especially in some of the valleys that trap the cold air. We could see some icy conditions on the roadway, so take it easy. Farther west, some scattered snows here in the Rockies and a bit more rain moving on into the northwest as the next warm front sweeps ashore. Your overnight lows on Tuesday dropping only into the 40s, even as far north as about the Pittsburgh area. So that flow of milder air pushing up here west of the Appalachians, but we will see some colder air coming into the picture. We'll talk about that in the weekly planner at 20 minutes after the hour. By Tuesday midday, New York City, have the umbrella if you're heading out to lunch. You may very well need to use it as we go into the afternoon hours. And likewise, your evening commute, maybe even all the way up toward Boston, will be on the wet side. Heaviest amounts of rain through the mid-morning hours, either in the mid-Atlantic or farther back from the Ohio River Valley southward into the southeast. And your high temperatures on Tuesday, we'll see the 40s to Boston and New York City, 50s and 60s as we head down toward Chesapeake Bay, but a little colder as we head farther west. Finally starting to see some of that colder air penetrate a bit further southward. And it is about time. It is yeah. December after all. After all. <laughs> it's bad news for travel tonight, though, in parts of the nation. We'll check out just where next on Travel Wise. Right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. This program was sponsored by UPS for the earliest delivery to the most international and U.S. cities. Now we'll never get presents to all the boys and girls around the world. No toys? Sorry. Need a hand? Nice hat. Let's get it on the truck. Who saved Christmas? Glad I could help. Hey, can I drive? Season's greetings from UPS. Choosing a cranberry juice is confusing. 100% juice cocktail, 27% juice corn syrup. Avoid the confusion. Trust Northland to always be 100% juice. Northland is pure genius. Northland, always 100% juice.
everybody. It's time to get you travel wise, and our main concern is you getting there safely. And we are concerned about that because in the east, we've got a lot of rain to talk about. Rain that is stretching all the way up in through the mid Atlantic and into the northeast. And on the back side of this, some snow. I shouldn't say on the back side of this, all the way out to the west, we've got some snow flying in parts of Montana and stretching all the way down into the Wasatch Mountains of Utah and the Colorado Rockies, where a little more snowfall. Not necessarily unwelcome. A lot of skiers, really much to their delight, seeing some of that snow flying. We do have numerous delays being reported here across the east. Some of it due to rain, some of it due to some fog, some to low cloud ceilings. So as you can imagine, with all that moisture on the map that I just showed you, we're going to find numerous arrival delays. And you might want to just call ahead, find out how conditions are faring for your airline, and if you need to head to the airline right away, or maybe just kind of take it slow. It is slow going, even if you're traveling by ground. So we encourage you to take it very, very easy. The delays into LaGuardia and into Philadelphia. It's been raining in Philly for quite some time now. Just starting to see the moisture moving into JFK and on into LaGuardia. So again, we encourage you to uh, call ahead, see how things are going. If you've got to pick someone up or even if you're going to catch a late night flight or early evening flight, you will certainly want to be prepared for how long you may have to wait. A little mixture of precipitation a possibility as we head into parts of upstate New York, stretching into portions of northern New England. Uh, we'll watch out for that icy mixture. It could mean some slick conditions for you for your morning commute. The rain wrapping around the area of upper level low pressure back into eastern sections of Arkansas. And so we continue to find still some moisture on the back side of this, but it's in the form of rain with very mild temperatures across this region. Thunderstorms a possibility uh, close to the vicinity of the upper level low. We've got a lot of gulf moisture to work with. So we are concerned about maybe a few thunderstorms, a few flickers of lightning. And where you have some of that convection or thunderstorm activity, that's also where you're likely to find the best shot. It's some heavier rain that could, again, reduce visibilities for your travels. Foggy travel around Chicago. Stretching down towards St. Louis, we've got some fog. Fog on up into Detroit and extending in toward Indianapolis. So many of the major air ports here going to have to contend with some foggy conditions through the overnight. Same can be said across parts of the southeast up toward the mid-Atlantic. Windy conditions mainly confined out to the west. We'll find brisk conditions for you into uh, Salt Lake City and even along the northwest coast. So if you're traveling into Seattle, you could experience some delays there. Again, there's a look at your region in the northeast. Many of the major interstates are going to be affected by some rainfall, maybe a mixture of precipitation in upstate New York. Here's the rain down Interstate 75. Much of I-95 is impacted as well. We get a cutoff point here just north, we think, of Indianapolis where things dry out a bit. So up around South Bend in Toledo, at least until mid-morning, it looks pretty good for you. Out to the west, portions of I-70 as you get west of Denver going to have to deal with some of that snow. So again, take the necessary precautions. Find out how travel is as you go through the Eisenhower and continue on westward. I-90. Again, going to run into some patchy snow at times as well. A quick check on your international weather. We have a tropical cyclone down here, uh, not far from Australia. Let me see if I can at least show you the effects of it. It's uh, bringing some rain on into northwestern sections of Australia, expected to make landfall here. Perhaps uh, winds will be well up over 100 miles per hour, so you're going to find some wet conditions. Along the Gold Coast, not faring too bad. Melbourne may see some rain, though, around 75. And all the way up toward Colombo, India, 86 degrees. I need a car. There's a whole new way to shop for a used car. The best cure for dryness. For professional April Air installation, depend on your local heating and air conditioning contractor. April Air, the world's first completely automatic humidifier. Nobody knows the troubles I see. Service Master Clean. The clean you expect. The service you deserve. You're waking up to a scrape your windshield morning. You freeze and freeze all through the night. That's okay, cause I know how to fight. Hit Forget blue with... washer fluids that freeze. This is Prestone de-icer fluid. It won't freeze in your reservoir and guards against refreeze on your windshield. With your Turn your windshield wipers into windshield scrapers. Fire away! Get in the Prestone zone so nothing can stop you now. 
Log on to Prestone.com for winter driving tips from the winter car care leaders. From the kids' soccer practice to the ride home from work, when you make plans every day, you need to know the forecast. Well, try it at e-travel.com. Use the web to control your business travel. E-travel from Oracle. Try it at e-travel.com. Florida, all the way up into the northeast, actually. Hello, I'm Warren Madden. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Weather Center. And I'm Sharon Result, and there is wintry weather in the meantime in parts of the west, and we're working on Tuesday's forecast. But we're going to start you out first in the northeast with word on the wet weather, which is stretching up into this part of the nation. Showers for many of you, but more of a steady rain event into areas like Philadelphia, uh, back down toward Baltimore. So there is going to be some tough, tough travel if you're heading out and about this evening to run some of those holiday errands. So we encourage you to take it slow, whatever you do. Plan on some delays if you're traveling by air anywhere across the east. The big picture showing, again, a little band of snow across northern Maine. That's exiting the region. We've had a few real quick moving showers moving from Worcester to Boston and now back out over the open water. And they were very light. And then more of a steady rain event. It's begun now into New York City with LaGuardia and JFK airports both reporting rain. Hartford looking at some rain moving on in, and this extends all the way back down toward Philly and D.C. There's a closer version, and again, you can see many of the major interstates impacted by the rain, which, by the way, is mostly light, but because of its persistence, it will tally up in the rain bucket. Down through Washington, D.C., and even points south and westward, the rain still coming down, but getting a little bit lighter and more widely scattered as we go south of D.C., and especially south of the Charlottesville area. We head you into the northeast, and again, just if you're curious about wondering how much rain you might expect over the next several hours, generally speaking, not much. It's going to be a light rain event for you, but where you find it to be more persistent, as I mentioned earlier, that's where you're going to find your best threat or your best chance for the really wet roadways for the more significant rain to come down. There's also some concern with temperatures dropping close to the freezing mark overnight. We might find a little area of some patchy freezing rain into the Susquehanna region of New York on to northern Pennsylvania, so you want to keep an eye out for that. And notice how the moisture overspreads much of southern New England as we go into your Tuesday morning. What's interesting to note, though, is although temperatures are dropping into the 30s, we're still pretty much above average for this time of the year across this part of the nation. And finally, as we take you on into the southeast, we'll find lots and lots of rain stretching down into much of the state of Georgia. And in the vicinity of this low, you might even find a few thunderstorms. Here's Warren with the latest on that. Thanks very much, Sharon. Let's check out the situation here in the southeast and what we are looking at. A surface low centered in northern Alabama, not too far from Huntsville. The upper level low lagging behind a little bit. Notice the swirl of moisture back center of the upper low around Memphis, Tennessee. And ahead of the surface low, a big surge of warmer air flowing on both the western and eastern sides of the Appalachians. Some cooler air is stuck here right on top of the Appalachians extending down into northeastern Georgia. So that's why on the temperature map here you see this little carving out of the 50s. That's that cooler air that just refuses to give way. We're seeing temperatures right now all the way up into the mid-60s, even heading up into southeastern Virginia. And then once we get behind the front, temperatures quickly drop off back into the 40s. Satellite picture really shows the center of the upper level day. We've talked about the northeast. We've talked about the southeast. Let's head west now and finish out the look at the country with Sharon. Well, you know, if we go west, we finally start talking about some snowfall. And the snow was certainly flying in parts of the west and still is into eastern Montana, stretching all the way back into the Wasatch Mountains of Utah. But it is showing signs of letting up here. Got some snow in the Colorado Rockies and then rain with the onshore flow here in the Pacific Northwest. So fairly active pattern, not a major storm system to deal with out west, but keeping things going, keeping things active, and a little bit of wind energy to throw in there as well. We'll check out the winds in a second. The onshore flow is going to keep things moist for you around Seattle, down Interstate 5 into Portland. We'll continue to see the rain. With this radar, you can certainly get a feel for the onshore push and that's really bringing that moisture on in, and that trend should continue right on into the overnight. So plan on a pretty wet evening as we head into Portland and on up towards Seattle. In and around Salt Lake City, you've had plenty of snow here, and the snow appears to be winding down, and that's good news. But look at some of these scenes from earlier on as folks were bundled up. 
Hey, it wasn't just the snow, it was the wind and temperatures that at one point dropped down to about 30 degrees. You can hear that Christmas music in the background trying to get people in the mood, but boy, when the wind is like that and the snow's coming down right into your face, it's kind of tough to get in the mood, isn't it? Uh, we'll continue to watch this winding down. That's the good news. Temperatures now around 32 degrees heading into Salt Lake City. Flip side of the coin for you skiers, whether it be in the Wasatch Range or heading into the Rockies of Colorado, great news here because it means more snow piling up in those higher elevations and you will find some significant snow uh, as we go on into the next several hours, maybe another three to six inches on top of what you've already received. Winds again are a bit brisk. That's adding a wind chill out to the west. It's also making it brisk for your travels, so we encourage you to get a firm grip on the steering wheel. That's a look out to the west. We've covered the east. We're going to see how all this comes together as we take a look at your Tuesday forecast. Warren? And it comes together to be a very wet day here across the Atlantic and reaching up across parts of southern New England as that low tracks ever so slowly northeastward. Watch out in the lower valleys, especially here along northern Pennsylvania, southern New York State. Could see some Tuesday. Well, we'll see them reaching into the 50s around Washington, D.C., Chicago. You'll top out right around in the 40s. And Los Angeles and San Francisco looks like you'll top out somewhere in the 60s. Do want to warn you, though, it's a bad night for travel in many parts of the nation. Lots of people out and about doing some sh uh, shopping or such. If you have to venture, venture out, You'll want to wait for Travel Wise. We have that for you, and it is coming up right after your local forecast. Don't go away. Right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. And this edition of the weekly reaching the ground, but again, a light rain is going to fall over much of southern New England as we go through the overnight. New York City has been seeing the rain as well as down toward Philadelphia, two areas that have been very, very wet thus far. You're uh, getting a break now around Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, as the bulk of the moisture has now pushed off to your east. All of Long Island seeing the rain, so wet along the LIE. Continue to find some showers down toward Baltimore and even into Washington, D.C. It was looking like you were going to get a break around D.C. at least for a while, but we started to see more of the showers popping up here and kind of filling in. So the precipitation pattern back to almost a steady rain event south and west of Washington. So more rain for you. And again, not tallying up to a whole lot in the rain bucket. Some of you may be up to another half inch. But on top of what you've already seen, you're going to find some wet conditions and maybe again some slick spots on some of the roadways. Here's a look at your Tuesday morning. Now I alluded to the potential for a little more wintry precipitation. High pressure to the north is sinking southward and we're finding some colder air draining into this area. Temperatures are slowly falling and don't have too far to go before they reach the magical number of 32, the freezing point. So we're likely to find the potential for some frozen precipitation, some freezing rain. In other words, as the rain falls, it freezes as it hits the pavement, and that may cause some slick spots, parts of upstate New York, northern sections of Pennsylvania. And by the way, that may be spreading a little bit into parts of interior northern New England as we go into your Tuesday afternoon. Something to watch out for. Meantime, again, temperature is not too terribly cold, but uh, for this time of the year, not looking too bad, but close to that freezing mark, so we'll have to watch out for some of that freezing rain as we get toward the morning. Here's a look at your current weather map. A lot of rain here across the southeast and on into the Ohio River Valley. With more information on that, here's Warren. Thanks, Sharon. Let's take it now farther to the south and into the southeast in the Ohio River. And we are looking at a complex weather system, the actual uh, cold front lagging back here across. Rain in the form of some showers. We're going to take a look at some radars in a second. If you were to analyze everything at the surface, this is what it would look like with our cold front dangling down across the Four Corners region on into southern California. Earlier, bringing some pretty gusty winds into parts of California with up to 71 mile per hour wind gusts this morning. That's all said and done, thankfully, as the cold front's moving on out. But we're left in the vicinity of the slow with more precipitation, rain into the central plains, and some snow heading into the higher elevations. I mentioned the onshore flow. This is all ahead of the next system that's approaching the Pacific Northwest. Mainly a light rain event, 
But boy, isn't it a nuisance when you're trying to get out and about and just get things done. Some of those holiday errands, it really slows you down. And you're going to have to slow things down because the roadways are going to be slick all the way back down through Portland and on into Salem. And with that radar, you can really get a feel for the onshore flow and just the bulk of the moisture that's available to continue to move onshore overnight on into your Tuesday. Salt Lake City seeing a break in the action. No more accumulations expected, but here are some scenes from earlier as folks were really, really... We worked all but it was a bit on the brisk side. The winds were up and temperatures cold down to around 30... ...evening and just a real brisk, brisk day around Salt Lake City. Now the moisture moving eastward, the snow will fly for some of the ski resorts in the western Colorado, and as I mentioned earlier, into the Cascades. Finally, there's a look at your big picture, but let's take it back to Warren now. Warren? As we count the final days of 1990, I go next Tuesday with Sharon. Okay, thanks, Warren. And again, most importantly, a lot of rain in the east. So what you can expect are some slowdowns for your morning commute for that Tuesday morning. Uh, maybe even some icy conditions in the southern New York State and northern sections of Pennsylvania. This area of low pressure continues to slowly ease on northward. The front itself kind of pinwheeling up north ahead of it. And so the rain is going to continue to be a factor throughout much of the northeast, especially on into southern New England. And with the high pressure building down and cooler air here, we're going to find maybe a few more areas of some frozen precipitation into interior sections of northern New England. Not for the major cities, but interior sections of northern New England. And some brisk conditions, too. So it's going to be windy and wet for some of you. And just a real raw day. The good news in the southeast is that the front moves well off to your east and you dry out. Relatively tranquil in the middle of the nation, a few snow showers, and the onshore flow continuing into the Pacific Northwest. There's a look at your precipitation forecast. Again, you can kind of get a feel for who's going to see the most moisture as we go through the overnight. Interstate 75, Interstate 65, a couple of them that will be impacted by that rain. So if those are your travel uh, routes, you're certainly going to want to slow things down, whether it be tonight or early in the morning. We'll take a look at your overnight lows. Again, nothing too terribly cold. Looking at uh, some pretty nice conditions for your lows. Some of these low temperatures actually where your high should be, but for this time of the year. So you're faring pretty well here. And uh, there's a look at some of those highs with lots of 30s and areas where highs would typically be in the 20s and still some 50s and 60s heading into the south. Well, it's a night best spent at home. Rain and snow causing problems in some areas. That's right, but if you have to travel, we have the weather information for you coming up. That's on Travel Watch. Correct. We've had some delays around LaGuardia and around JFK. Now the only delays on into Atlanta. But anywhere here in the east where you've got the rain, the fog, the low cloud ceilings, plan on some extra travel time, whether it be by air or by ground. 
and there's a look at your travel weather. Even some orange painted on the map for a mixture here in parts of upstate New York and extending into parts of interior northern New England where some cold air is funneling down out of Canada and the moisture is meeting up with that. And again, you could find uh, potential for some icy conditions in some spots. So we encourage you to take it easy and plan ahead. And just if you know that there could be icy spots, slow things down. Your thunderstorm forecast featuring from the Ohio River Valley back toward the southeast coast, the potential for a few more rumbles of thunder, maybe some heavier downpours associated with those thunder showers. Foggy travel here, reduced visibilities of a half mile or less, and there's a look at your windy travel, primarily out to the west. Some very gusty winds might be expected in the northwest. Again, trouble spot here. Please watch out for some patchy areas of some icy conditions, maybe even extending into northern sections of Pennsylvania during the morning. And just to show you that the better part of your day tomorrow is going to be wet, you know, starting out with that morning commute in the northeast. This program was sponsored by...